Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Type 25 Assault Rifle, and I'm going to tell you right here in the beginning of the episode that I'm not a big fan of this Assault Rifle, and my gameplay with it wasn't very good, so you're going to get to see me struggle a lot. And instead of whining and complaining about the Type 25, I'm going to go skip straight into the numbers and tell you why it is I think this weapon needs a buff. The Type 25 deals 33 damage in close quarters combat. This is the same as the MP7, Vector, Scorpion, that sort of thing. And at a distance, your damage will decrease all the way down to 22, which is slightly better than some of the submachine guns, meaning that in all practical purposes it will take between 4 and 5 shots to kill, depending on how far away you are from the target. That's a very high number of shots to kill for an assault rifle, but it will at least have a consistent feel to it. This does mean that this is the lowest damage assault rifle in Black Ops 2. Technically, the M27 has the same uh, 33 to 22 profile, however the Type 25 has lower range than the M27 and obviously less lesser accuracy, so effectively this is going to be the lowest damage assault rifle in the game. It does have an intermediate damage of 30 between 13 and 33 meters. This doesn't really change anything as it's still a four shot kill. It's going to change the headshots a little bit, which we're going to talk about in a second. But what this translates to in all practical terms is this this is also the lowest ranged assault rifle in Black Ops 2. So the Type 25 has the lowest damage and the lowest range. Its headshot multiplier is 1.1x, which is a little bit on the low side. This was supposed to have been patched, and I am embarrassed to admit in the patch episode I reported on, it without testing that particular thing because I thought it would be such a simple thing to fix. I had a lot of subscribers send me messages saying that it wasn't fixed, that it wasn't fixed, that it wasn't fixed, so I went back and tested it. It's still 1.1x damage on the head. It was supposed to get a headshot multiplier increase. That never happened. What that means is that your shots to kill with headshots don't change at all with the exception of close range. Only in that 33 damage uh, range all the way out to 13 meters, that's where your headshots are valuable. Outside of close range, your headshots won't make you kill anybody any faster. It's still going to be four and five shots to kill if you're anything outside of very close range. So we've talked about some bad things about the Type 25. Let's talk about where this weapon shines and where it's really good as rate of fire. It fires at 900 RPM in fully automatic mode, which is the fastest firing assault rifle in Black Ops 2. It is technically tied with the SWAT 556. However, you have to put select fire on the SWAT to fire that fast. So this is the fastest normal firing assault rifle without any sort of attachments placed on it. That's a good thing and a bad thing. The bad thing about that is the recoil is medium to high. I almost wanted to put it high, but I played with it a lot. It's really not a high recoil assault rifle. It doesn't kick quite like the SCAR, but it does kick. I'm gonna. It's really more of a medium recoil. It just depends on how good you are at controlling the recoil. It's fairly easy to control, but you can't quite full-on hose with it. It's just a little bit difficult to get a handle on. When you put select fire on this weapon, it retains the same rate of fire of 900. However, it's now a three-shot burst weapon, and there doesn't appear to be much of a burst delay. If there is one, it's a very small one. The burst delay meaning the, the time between each each of the bursts. This one you can spam pretty fast all the way up to 900. With select fire the recoil is significantly improved. It's now a low recoil weapon but unfortunately the range is so low if you nerf the rate of fire it becomes effectively useless at close range which was really about the only thing that was good at anyway. Sort of, kind of, we're gonna have to talk about that in a little bit. It does have a slightly better hip fire box than the other assault rifles or at least it's reported to have a slightly better hip fire box. I have not honestly tested this the uh, box appears to be smaller to me visually and it is a very high fire rate weapon which you use in close quarters combat so the hip fires effectiveness is better it's not one of the single shot weapons or one of the slow fire weapons or some of the other weapons I've complained about not being particularly effective with hip fire this is a hip fire style weapon high RPM spray and pray just put your bullets out there and they're gonna hit something Unfortunately, the Type 25 has a slow time to kill, and I'm going to say it has a mostly slow time to kill because this one's a little bit funny. In close quarters combat, it has a very slow time to kill. Up close, all the way out to medium range, very, very slow. At long range, it actually has one of the fastest time to kills if you're not missing any of your shots because it kills in five shots, which is pretty average, but it shoots way faster than most of the assault rifles, so it only makes sense that it kills faster than them. But that's mostly, that's if you're not missing, if you're always on target, if you're at the right range, and if a lot of things. In all practical terms, you're going to be closer to your enemies in this game. This isn't really a lot of long range uh, lines of sight, especially for an assault rifle with a high rate of fire and good hip fire. And it seems like it was designed for close range, but it just kills a little bit slow. 
The iron sights are a tad difficult to use. They're not unusable, it's not that I can't see anything, but they are a little bit obtrusive, and especially without a suppressor, the muzzle flash is really bright, and I have a hard time tracking my target. If you use a suppressor on these particular iron sights, it will reduce the muzzle flash, or almost completely remove it and help you track your targets easier, make the iron sights more usable. Generally, I don't prefer the iron sights. I prefer optics on this weapon. Just about any kind of optics I'm comfortable with at this point, but I don't like the iron sights. That's a subjective part of in-depth, but that's what I've got. The aim down sights in and out time is very standard for the assault rifle class at a quarter of a second each. Pretty much all the assault rifles have that. Reload time is a little bit on the slow side. The animation time is 2.34 seconds and the reload cancel time is about 1.72. So you're going to be spending about 2 seconds reloading this time every time you run out of ammo. Fast mags is not a bad idea at all, but this is a slow reload time. That's actually a big detriment to this weapon because the weapon fires really, really fast and you burn through your magazine very, very fast. It's, it's a spray weapon, it's hard to do accurately, it's hard to control, so you're going to be reloading a lot. Fast mags is a good attachment if you're com comfortable sacrificing other things, which I was not, so I did a lot of slow reloading. Magazine size is 30, extended mag size is 40, that's standard for the assault rifle class. Extended mag's not such a bad idea. I have heard, I have not tested this, I read this on some forums somewhere, that extended mags makes you reload 10% faster. I'm going to be doing an episode on extended mags eventually where I test that out, but I'll go ahead and toss that out there. That's one of the reasons I don't use extended mags as much anymore. This used to be the AR-SMG hybrid. For those of you that are familiar with the Peacekeeper, that was designed to be a hybrid between an AR and SMG. This is kind of the AR-SMG hybrid that launched with the game. It has more of an SMG fire rate, similar to SMG damage, but not quite as low as the SMGs, better hip fire, that sort of thing. It's I guess you could call it the poor man's Peacekeeper. I'm not entirely sure. This weapon has two strengths, two ideal places to use it. It's best used for hip firing because the box is supposed to be a little bit tighter, not a lot, just like a little bit. It's a very high fire rate weapon, it's very easy to handle hip fire, so it's good at hip firing. And it's also quite good at long ranges if you're not missing any of your shots. If you keep all five of your shots on target at long range, this outclasses a lot of assault rifles. It'll kill people very, very quickly. But that's very difficult to do. My honest recommendation with this weapon, and I try not to do this in in-depth episodes because most weapons have something that they're good at. My honest recommendation is that this gun is best not used at all. I honestly do not have a use for this weapon in any of my classes. It's too specialized, it's too weak at too many things. I tend to avoid it. But for those of you that do want to use this weapon for challenges, for those of you that this is your favorite weapon and you now hate me because I, I don't like it, the two attachments and the two ways to use it that I found best is I just found it best with quick draw handle and stock. Quick draw you're going to need in close quarters combat when you're going to be uh, aiming down sights with it. I, I run quick draw on almost all my guns anyway. And stock is something that you're going to need to sidestep away from your enemies because even though it's best at long ranges it's very difficult to control the shots and most people just like to get in your face most people when they use it they just like to get up close and spray with it that's kind of what I do so these two attachments have worked best for me I would also recommend some kind of optics for it the millimeter scanner and uh, hybrid sights have worked the best for me but there's nothing wrong with any of the other sights perks are kind of up to you I like I said I don't think this is a very useful assault rifle so I have not made a very effective class for it well guys, that's all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out my previous episode, which was my 5 in the morning review of the Peacekeeper SMG hybrid thing that came out on the Revolution map pack, you can click the box on the left. Because I screwed a few things up in that episode and there were some things that I didn't talk about, I'm going to be redoing the Peacekeeper SMG and talking about some other things in that in the next episode if you click the box on the right. So it's pretty much Peacekeeper any way you go. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.